Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. As Thomas said, I'm Chris Gouda, Senior Product Manager for Voice. Uh, so I, I'm really excited to be here today uh, because I have something really great to show you. It's secret powers of voice. I wanted that catchphrase so everybody can like interested in coming to my uh, talk. But it's really, I'm really excited. But first, let's talk about uh, programmable voice real quick. So I'll start with my cousin a couple weeks ago. He, he just came in town. We haven't really caught up for a while. So he's like, hey, Chris, what are you up to? What are you doing these days? I started uh, the, pro the product manager for Programmable Voice in the last three months, so we haven't really spoken. So I was like, oh, I'm like really excited. I was like, I'm product manager for Programmable Voice. He's like, huh, what is Programmable Voice? I go, well, you can make, you know, I was even more excited to explain what it is. And I was like, oh, you can make outbound calls, you can make receive calls, you can play messages, you can collect input. And he's like, hmm, okay, well, it's okay, yeah, not that great. Well, I'm like, you know what? When you're coming in uh, two, week, two days ago, uh, your flight got delayed, and you got a phone call saying your flight got delayed, and then they ask you to press one so you can get notified when the flight is on time. Well, that's basically programmable voice. That's called voice notification. That's programmable voice. So you can do, as I said, talk, play uh, the TTS, play audio, you can dial. But today, I want to talk to you about speech. This is my favorite subject, speech. Has anybody ever used speech before? Have you played around with uh, Tulio speech? Or have you, do you have any experience using uh, speech recognition in the past? So when we announced speech, I was so excited. I was like a kid in a candy store. Because, not because speech is cool, because I have a lot of experience working with the speech in the past. And uh, it's hard. Like, forget the cost aside for a second. You have to write grammars to make sure that everything's working OK. And then you got to tune them. You got to do that every step of the way. But with the Twilio speech, it just works. You don't have to write anything. So let me just quickly show you how easy it is to use speech. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick functions. Have you guys used functions yet? I'm a huge Lambda fan. Uh, but functions is even more cool because it comes with uh, the Twilio Node SDK installed. So you can just get going super fast. So, let me just create quickly a function. While I'm loading that up, I'm going to buy a phone number so I can call in and quickly test. All right, here we go. I'm going to put this close to it. I have not tested this on a speakerphone, so hopefully it will work. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Please tell me in a few words what you to do. Customer service. You said customer service. See, it works. So it's really super easy to work, uh, use speech, but let's talk about that. Why is, it, why is speech important? Okay, speech is, you know, it's cool, it's easy to use, but why is speech important? Well, I believe we, it, it, we are in a, in, a, in a time where the, how you communicate with your customers is changing. So if you look at like phone systems, they evolved over time, where back in the day you had phone systems with the keypad, so when you call somebody to press an input, you can pick up the phone and you can press the keys. But today I have a cell phone. So when you call me and ask me to press a key, it's incredibly annoying to uh, take the phone, push the key, uh, and then put it back in to see if I missed it or if, if, if I heard it correctly, and then go back again. So it's really annoying. Now, if you look at uh, yeah, last week, um, Apple announced Apple Watch. There's no keypad on the Apple Watch. You have to be able to speak. So when you want to reach your users, you want to be able to speak to them. So use cases. What are, what are customers building? So since we launched in May, we have, the adoption has been great. We have customers building lots of good use cases, call steering, the typical use case that you see where previously you had DTMF enabled IVR applications. Now you're doing that with the speech data capture. You couldn't really capture alphanumeric values with uh, DTMF, so you need to have a speech or addresses. Conversational bots. You can build bots to be able to help your users when they're calling into an IVR. QA automation. This is my favorite. I haven't really thought about this use case. So let me just give you an example of what this use case looks like. So we have a customer that has a very large IVR. It usually takes, whenever you make changes, it takes them hours, days to test the IVR, make sure everything's okay before they go to production. So they went to their QA engineer and said, hey, can you find a way to speed up the testing? So the QA engineer looked, okay, let me see what I can do. So he went on to the, uh, uh, he was kind of into Google, kind of looking around what he can do, and he came across speech uh, blog post that we published back in May. He's like, huh, can I build an app using Tulio speech to test my IVR? So he built a prototype, and he was able to demo it to the, uh, the, his boss. 
and they're super impressed. And so now they're actually, they started building an app that can test their IVR where they expect they can test their entire IVR in minutes, not hours. So you can go to production faster with any changes you're making. And you know, when you automate the process, it's always easier because you can make sure that you capture all the, uh, uh, any issues quickly than a post manual process. So these are all awesome use cases. But I was like, I want to build something cool. I want to build something cool that is practical, that is useful. So what can I build? Boom. Real-time transcriptions. So I was like, how about I build a real-time transcriptions so that, I could, so, so that it's A, it's useful, and B, it's cool. So let me quickly show you what real-time transcriptions looks like. And then this is just the first part of the demo. So let me just quickly show you. Let me just reload this. So just for the purpose of this demo, I uh, had a conversation with one of my colleagues earlier. Um, so we recorded it. I'm playing that back. So the recording is being live transcribed. But don't worry, I'm going to actually share the true live transcription as we get further down the demo. I'm going to quickly call. I have a Twilio client running locally here. So I'm just going to call through my Twilio client. Welcome to Chris's conference line, powered by Twilio. Hopefully it works. Help you. Hi, I would like to know how much money is remaining in my account. Sure, I'll be glad to help you. May I please get your bank account number and name on the account? Sure, it's Stuart Logan, account number 805-7845-3895-061. Thank you. Let me just check on it. Okay. Can you please verify the last four numbers of your Social Security ID? It's 1212. You still have 84,000 pounds. Is there anything else that I could help assist you with? Yeah, if I transfer it to my bank account in Lloyds of London, how long will it take? If we do the transaction over the phone or online, our team will still contact you for verification prior to sending your money to a different bank. The whole process usually just takes two to three days. Oh, I see. Well, never mind. I'll just do it after the holidays. Thanks for your help, Chris. You're very welcome, Mr. Stewart. Day and thank you for calling Bank of Wealth. Goodbye. That there's no trick here. I was literally playing a conversation that we recorded into a, the, a conference, and that's being live transcribed, and you're seeing it as it's being transcribed. Now, I won't lie to you. I think it's hard to get 100% accurate on live transcription. I'll have to say you can actually make sense of what's being on the screen. Uh, it's 85%, 90% accurate, and it's cool. But let's actually talk about what. So besides the cool factor. Why? What are the use cases? Why would I use real-time transcription? So I'm going to play a little audio clip here. This is a 60-second audio clip of a 20 minutes full conversation that was available on YouTube, but I'm going to only play the first 60 seconds. So. Oh. Let's try that again. Thank you for calling. Technical support, my name is Mark. How are you doing today? I am absolutely, I am, I am your worst nightmare. I am calling extension 3575 over and over and over and goddamn over again to reach Michelle who said to call her there. She wants to talk to me. She's been dealing with my situation for two days now. And I've been on the phone for three hours trying to reach her. And every time I call that goddamn number, I get your department. And none of you know what the fuck I'm talking about. What kind of a goddamn situation is this? Yeah, I'm so sorry about that, sir. Uh, could I get the phone number on your account? So, I mean, it, it's entertaining, obviously. But here's the reality. You might be saying, Chris, that's not real. That doesn't happen. Well, I can tell you, I've been working with the contact center customers for more than 10 years. This happens every day. Maybe not at, at this intent level, but it happens every day, where your agents, agents in a contact center are receiving customers that are very upset. So as a manager, when you're responsible for running a smooth contact center operations, how do you ensure quality? So today, you listen to recordings after the conversations are done, but you can only do that 1%, 2% of the time when you're taking thousands of calls. But how about we can do real-time QA with transcriptions? If you have the voice translated into text in real time, 
you can see how things are. You can actually uh, monitor hundreds and thousands of conversations as they're happening and get alerted when something were to go wrong in one of those conversations where a manager, you know, require manager's uh, assistance. In the audio that played, if you ever find that recording on YouTube, the uh, customer would never let the agent to transfer the call to the manager. He just wouldn't know. That goes on for 20 minutes, and the agent says, I want to bring the manager on online. Like, he wouldn't let him go. He wouldn't let him bring, bring the uh, manager. But when you have something like this, a manager can get notified automatically so that they can actually jump into a conference, monitor, or coach the agent on how to handle the situation, or just take over the conversation uh, completely to help the customer. Now, I'm going to show. Uh, now we can actually do the real uh, live transcription, so I can show you uh, how you can do that. I'm going to use one of my colleagues, Stuart, here. He's going to come and help me um, with a little role play. All right. So, I, by the way, this is just a, a, a quick app that I built so I can actually make phone calls and put them into a conference uh, as opposed to dialing in. Um, just give me one second here. That's you, yeah? Let's call you Stuart. All right, let's see if it works. Waiting, waiting. <coughs> Hi, this is Chris from Pizza Loco. How can I help you? Uh, hi, this is Bob. I'd like to order a large supreme and two regular meat lovers bags. So that's large supreme and two meat lovers? I'm sorry, we don't deliver in that location. Well, that's not true. Well, I made the same one a few weeks ago. Yeah, we changed the policy last week. Oh, man, this is bullshit. I want to talk to your manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he's not here. Well, there must be someone I can talk to. There's no one around, it's just me. This is crap. I'm taking my business somewhere else. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> so, so a couple of things here. So profanity detection. So you can actually detect when the profanity happens. So I can alert the manager. This is where you could use something like Tulio Notify. So you can actually send a notification no matter where your manager is, whether it's SMS, push notification, browser. You can notify your managers. They get alerted. They can dial into the conference to listen. Um, one other thing I did, I thought that was, uh, you know, just wanted to kind of add some color to this. So I went onto the internet and downloaded a bunch of words that are considered positive and negative words. They're just simple words. So I'm just applying uh, a very rudimentary sentiment analysis on this text. So I'm applying the word. So this is the word count. So when you're looking at the conversation, there's like eight positive words and three negative words. But I'm sure with this in your hands, you can probably do a much better job than I have instead of using rudimentary. Uh, uh, sentiment analysis, you can probably f pump that into some kind of AI and come back with a better analysis. What else can you build? Oh. Contextual info the agents. This is interesting. So imagine a scenario where I'm an agent and a customer calls me and say, he says, hey, I was driving down the old street and I saw a property listed there for sale. I'm interested to know more details. Before agent does anything, the property shows up on the screen. Why? Because you were in, uh, in the background, you're real time transcribing what the user is saying, pumping that into your system, searching what, based on the intent, displaying the information to the agent. So the agent doesn't have to uh, type in or know how to look for that information. What else can you do? Pause and resume call recording. This is very critical because you, if you want to be PCI compliant, you don't want to have credit card information in the recording. So here's a scenario where when an agent is collecting credit card information, imagine an agent is saying, Can I, may I please have a credit card number? System says, oh, I heard credit card. Let's just pause the recording. And then when you say, okay, here's a confirmation code. Let's restart the recording. So the, during the period of time where you're collecting information, the, it's not in the recording, but the rest of the stuff is in recording. Now, 
In your call centers, in your applications, it might be a different flow, but there's always some keywords that you can look for to be able to pause and play recording. Let's just quickly look at what I've done. How did I build it? Two phone calls, one to the agent, one to Twilio, conversation starts, and I'm pumping that, it's coming back to my app. I'm using Sync. Have, I don't know if you guys have actually used uh, Sync. I had so much fun building with Sync because putting a web page together with the Sync is so easy where I can just push information onto the screen without having to do any polling. If I were to implement polling, it would have taken me a much longer and different infrastructure to be able to support that. So I can just push information. What did I use? Phone numbers, programmable voice, functions, agent conference, Twilio client, Sync, jQuery bootstrap, and service and Tomcat for the back end. Uh, one important detail, by the way, when you're looking at the demo, I forgot to mention, you see the text sometimes flickering. So when you're using speech to text with the gather, there's a, two, there's a partial result and a full result. So when you're speaking, as audios continue to pump into the speech engine, we're also sending you a constant webhooks of partial results of what we understood so far. And the partial results change because as we collect more text, we pump it into some artificial intelligence to see how to construct the sentences. So as the final result comes in, it's much more accurate than a partial result. That's why you see the screen flickering a little bit. If you have any questions, I'll be in the back of the room um, or I'll be in the super, uh, the super class. So feel free to come by and ask me any questions or email me at kguda at twilia.com. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see what you build with the real-time transcriptions. Thank you.